What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Moving on to the next topic. I'm now going to talk about product cost versus period cost. And you're definitely going to see these concepts come up in your course. Your prof is definitely going to talk about them. And before getting into these, I want to make a note. If you remember, I described in a previous video that there's three general types of companies you're going to run into in this course. Manufacturing company, merchandising, service company. And when I'm talking about product versus period cost, I want to make a note that I'm talking about a manufacturing company. In fact, another word for product cost, as I'm going to mention soon, is manufacturing costs, right? So you can't have product costs for merchandising or a service company, right? So we're talking about a manufacturing company in this video. And to describe these two concepts, I actually want to go through an example on the way. So I want you to pretend like you have a company that sells cars. And not just the dealership, I want you to pretend like you actually make the car as well. So you run the whole show. And so let's say there's two parts to your company. Let's say that you have a factory, right? So that's where the cars are made. And then once the car is finished, let's say you also own a dealership. And the dealership deals with the sale of the car, right? So after the dealership, we get it to the customer. Now there could be other parts to this company as well. You can have a factory and then you could also have like headquarters, right? But for now, I just want you to pretend for simplicity that there's only two parts to your company. You have like a factory and you have one factory, you have one dealership, the dealership sells to customers. Now, in the factory, <clears throat> that is where the car is made. That's where it's manufactured. So all of your product costs are basically incurred in this factory. And as I mentioned before, another term for product costs is manufacturing costs. That's how you want to think about product costs. So anything that deals with manufacturing the car, any costs that are incurred in this factory are product costs. Now there's actually three different types of product costs that you're going to be seeing come up in this course. So one type is something called direct materials. Another type is called direct labor. And then the last type is manufacturing overhead. Right, those are the three types of product costs incurred in the factory. You got direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. And so what I wanna do is gonna go over each of these briefly, what they mean. So direct materials, the way there's different definitions for this. You'll see a definition in your textbook. Your prof may give a definition. The way I like to think about it is basically any materials that are directly traceable to the product. So that's actually another concept that you're going to see come up, traceability. Basically, can you see the material going on the product, trace to the product? So for example, a car, if we take paint and we're painting the car, that paint I could see the paint go on the car, right? It's observable, it's traceable to the product. Let's say there's another material in the factory, like um, let's say that the factory gets hot, and so you have to have a bunch of fans throughout the factory, right, to keep the workers cooled off. Those fans, can you see the fan go directly on the car? No, you can't, but it's still a material that's used in the factory. So that would actually be an indirect material that would go under manufacturing overhead, right? So direct materials directly traceable to the product. So the paint used for the car, uh, the steel used for the car, maybe the rubber to make the tires, et cetera, et cetera. It's directly traced to the product. Same thing with direct labor. It's labor that's directly traced to the product. So if there is someone that is painting all the cars, his labor, you could see how his labor affects the product directly, right? It's a direct cost. Versus let's say there's a custodian 
in the factory. So it's still labor that you have to pay for, but notice how a custodian's labor, you can't see how it directly affects the car. Their labor is still important, right? They're responsible for the maintenance of the factory, but you can't see how their labor directly affects the car. They're responsible for the maintenance of the whole factory. So that would be an example of indirect labor that would go under manufacturing overhead, right? So direct labor, any labor that you see that's traceable to the product. And then manufacturing overhead, the way I like to think about it is basically any product costs incurred in the factory that are not direct materials, not direct labor. So we mentioned before like indirect materials, right? Or indirect labor, right? So indirect materials may be like custodial supplies, right? Still incurred in the factory, but not directly traceable to the product. Indirect labor, for example, a custodian, um, maybe like a factory supervisor that can also go under uh, indirect labor, right? Working for the whole factory, not for a specific car. Um, what else would go under manufacturing overhead? Let's say the rent for the factory, or if you bought the factory, then you can maybe claim depreciation on it. Um, the utilities you have to pay for the factory, et cetera, et cetera. Basically any costs incurred in the factory that are not direct materials, not direct labor. So the production is basically happening over here with these three things, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. And so I'm gonna race this over here just to give myself more room with this uh, flow chart. So the production happens here and then once production is finished, you have your product, right? That you're going to sell. Now, product costs, I want to make a distinction here. When the product is finally finished, it goes into inventory. So it's actually an asset on the balance sheet. In fact, it doesn't necessarily even have to be finished for it to be considered an asset to go into inventory, but we're gonna cover that in a future video. But before the sale, the product is classified as an asset. That goes on the balance sheet under inventory. And then what happens is you make the sale and then it gets classified as cost of goods sold. So that's when it hits the income statement. But it only hits the income statement once there's a sale made. This has to be made. So a sale triggers the product to go to cost of goods sold, and then it transfers from the balance sheet to the income statement. But again, we're gonna go into more detail about that in future videos, but thought I would make that distinction there. Okay, so that's basically how product costs work. Their manufacturing costs, they're incurred in the factory. So going back to our example of having this car company, let's say the other part of your company is the dealerships. So the dealership is responsible for selling the car. And so basically that's where you incur your period costs. So the way to think about period costs they're basically non-manufacturing costs. Okay, and in this example, as I said, we only have a factory, we have a dealership, but there could also be like a headquarters, right? Where maybe the CEO is and then like accounting department, that would also go under period costs. Basically any part of the company that's not the factory the period cost, that's where the period costs are incurred. So um, basically you'll see different sort of types of period costs. The most common ones are like the marketing or the uh, advertising or the selling costs, right? The cost to market the product. Um, also stuff like general admin, you'll see 
go under here. So like the salaries of anyone not working in the factory. So maybe the salary of the salespeople or the sales manager, the CEO salary goes under here as well. Right, so period costs, basically any non-manufacturing costs, any costs that are not incurred in the factory. And then what happens with period costs is they're incurred within that period. And so they pretty much flow onto the income statement as an expense. Now there are some period costs that you can actually capitalize as an asset first. So put them on the balance sheet. Uh, so for example, let's say that for this dealership, you actually bought the building. So that's a cost that you incur. And then you put the building on the balance sheet as an asset. And then in the future, you could take depreciation on that building. So then that would flow into the uh, expenses on the income statement, right? So you can take a period cost, capitalize it as an asset and then it could flow into expenses on the income statement in future years. But most period costs, they are uh, expense within that period. That's why they're called period costs. So they're expensed, they go on the income statement, right? So the flow is a little bit different. Directly on the income statement, with product costs, they go into inventory as an asset on the balance sheet first, and then once a sale is made, then it flows onto the income statement as cost of goods sold. So we went into a little bit more detail here, but there's actually going to be even more detail going into here. So there's going to be stuff like uh, work in process, finished goods. Um, we're going to have raw materials, right? There's going to be more detail relating to direct materials. And so I'm going to cover that in future videos, but again, Let's keep it general, try to keep it general, and then zoom in slowly just so you have a better understanding of what is going on. So that's pretty much it. That's the difference between product costs and period costs. Product costs, they're manufacturing costs. There are three types, right? And then period costs, they are non-manufacturing costs. So basically any costs in the company that are not happening in the factory.